Did that do it? Okay, good. Let's try that again. <coughs> Hello, Mina-san, and welcome to Tinker Tailor Solder Fry here in the Mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. My name is Ian Horner, and I will be your navigator and host as we work on stuff here on the program because that's what we do. It's a let's try program, which means uh, we try to do things that we may or may not be good at. And uh, today, we found out that I was good at something in the past, uh, and then uh, we are going to find out if I was good enough, <laughs> if I, if I can, hmm, continue to be good at it in the future. That thing, uh, specifically being a leather, don't tear down the camera, bag, which uh, some of you may recognize from previous episodes of Tinker Tailor Soldier Fry. Uh, this is something that I had been uh, I put together over the course of a couple episodes, and uh, boy, oh boy, do I love it. I, it's basically a, a daily uh, companion, and I completely forgot to empty it out. Here we got some old mail, uh, shopping bag, car share, fobs, notebooks. Why am I sure? Checkbook, uh, sunglasses. Ooh, that's a very uh, ugly looking uh, microfiber cloth. Some pills, some ID, Leatherman, extra mask, empty peanut bag for the birds and squirrels, pen, sharpie, measuring tape, and enclosure for the uh, uh, for the peanut bag. And importantly, importantly, here's what broke. Uh, as you can see. This side we got a nice little d-ring uh, and i liked these they, they they looked nice they came from uh value village from a belt and uh one of the uh i was at some point picking up my bag and it uh it flipped over like like this and i thought well let's just give it a quick shake to uh fix up the d-ring and pull it up and pop just done the the, the, the d-ring just said no absolutely not yeah this looks like cast zinc if that, uh, it's uh, this, it's very, very uh, powdery on the inside. Um, but I was able to very uh, temporarily fix it with a couple of zippity whiz bangs, zap straps, and that's that served me well for a little while. But uh, these the, the the bits, uh, the plastic bits, catch on me uh, me wrist when it goes through, so I get scratched up. Also, it looks terrible, and we can do better. And we should. So let's. Uh, so let us do better. And uh, ooh, you know what? I think I was going to say that uh, we'll just do the one side and see how that uh, see how that uh, comes out for us. But let me just swap you over to the uh, the upper camera here. Let's go to uh, big iPhone mode. There it is. Uh, woof. You can see that this side, which has the nice uh, the still in place D ring is uh, starting to come apart with some of the stitching. So yeah, this is a good time for us to get both sides off and uh, to fix it. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to uh, take out the stitching here on both of these sides uh, and then pop out the rivet and then uh, either we'll have to make some new uh, tabs. I think we can reuse the, these without too much of a trouble. Uh, and then re-sew it back up. Maybe with a little glue there, too. Uh, Arclight says, may I suggest that you shake the bag out at this point to get crumbs and other mung out of it? I mean... Oh, yeah, there's... Oh, wow, there's, there's onion juice in there. <laughs> we'll get to see that all on screen. So, yeah. Let's, uh... Not ideal aesthetically, says Contingent Cat. Why you carry on a checkbook? <laughs> no, the, the, the checkbook was uh, just there because I needed to uh, pay a man for some uh, car work, and I wasn't sure what they were going to, uh, what, what they needed for that. Uh, okay, no, it's not onion juice. It's uh, just onion skin, because, you know, I like to just go to the store and buy onions like a, like a normal human being would. Uh, let us turn this on to automatic so that it's probably not burning out your eyeballs so hard. Okay, uh, and yes, I need to have a sip of my beer, because... Hmm. 
it's the end of the day and Ian needs a relax juice. Right. Let us... Oh, yes. And what am I going to replace those D-rings with? Well, you know what? I went back to the, uh, the thrift shop and the man there said these are the ones I wanted. Uh, so for the low, low cost of $3.99, I'm going to replace it with these copper. At least I hope they're copper. Wait, they're probably not copper. If they were copper, they would bend a lot easier than they are not bending right now. So it's probably more zinc, uh, but at least now I know not to jam on these, uh, these D-rings to take things apart. Right. Let's get some tools out here. Uh, so I think for the de-stitching portion, I'm not going to be too fancy here. And uh, let's see here. I'm going to, you know what, just use this exacto. It seems in, uh, in fine shape. And then we'll uh, get out the rest of the tools as we need them. This is going to be a pretty straightforward one. Yeah, Seam Ripper would be a uh, Electra, a normal thing for, for, for regular human beings to use. But I think for the size and, uh, and thickness of these particular threads... I think I might just want to cut down the edge or at least see how that works. So let's start by just popping out the seams here. Yep. I want to be careful because I don't want to damage the leather if at all possible. But oh, there we go. Now it's starting to come. Just pulls apart quite nicely, actually. Are you going to try a new stitch? Onion uh, says, uh, no, we'll probably just use the same staddle stitch because that's, uh, that's the easiest, uh, way to do it. Yeah, getting the rivet out is probably going to be the most difficult part, but I have, uh, thoughts and plans on that. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that when it's time. Man, I forgot how good I made this. Look at that. You got the, uh, the double over and then through. Did I call you Onion? <laughs> oh. Orion, I'm sorry about that. Uh, there's only one Onion and he lives in Beach City and uh, he is a little shit who is probably more powerful than we let on. God, I wish we'd got a real ending to Onion's story. Sometimes you just have to let mysteries be mysteries. All right. Good, good. This is coming along rather well. I, I have a feeling that the de-stitching part is going to be the, the easiest part of this. I was worried too, if I can just keep rambling on here as I am. I mean, who's going to stop me? Myself, apparently. Um, what was I saying? I was worried that I had like just glued the shit out of this inner bit here and that it was going to be a case of oh god i got to get in there with a uh, with something to clean up the res the glue residue or or heat it up with the uh, with the hot air workstation thankfully i decided to use the power of thread alone <laughs> for some reason you use rubber cement instead of contact cement yeah i i I don't know why I've been using the rubber cement. I think someone's been uh, giving me bad advice. Not you, Corvus. You've been giving me nothing but good advice. But uh, honestly, the uh, the, the non-gluing makes me happy because we don't have to glue anything. Or unglue or re-glue. Too much glue. All right. That's it. That's all the... Uh, that's all she wrote in terms of reds in there. Now we've got this uh, this rivet to deal with. How's the best way to deal with a rivet? Let's get that blade out of there so we don't scratch things up inadvertently. Uh, I think if we come from the back side that's not really going to work out for us too well. I mean, we could try drilling it out, but I think that's a bit, uh, that's a bit much to... Uh, a bit too far. 
honestly, I think we could probably just pop it if we just pull hard enough. Nope. But, but what I can do is... I can see brass under there. All right, hold on. I'm going to go grab a, uh, a set of uh, side cutters from the, the thing. Dremel it out, says Corvus. <laughs> We're on the same page, I guess, there. Mentally. Okay. Good thing I keep all of my tools nearby. Hacksaws in there too, in case we need it. But I think these uh, these rusty old side cutters should be uh, more than enough to deal with this. So let's just uh, see if we can get our cutter in there. Uh, let's go flat side up. Huh. Okay. Seems to be in place, and just pop it. Well, look at that. Didn't even nick the leather. These are not the best rivets. <laughs> I tell you what. Wow. <laughs> okay, well, that, that, things are going uh, a lot easier than I thought they would so far. Let's uh, just pull out some of the rest of that thread there that we don't need. Clean up the area a bit. Just a little bit of marking from the uh, from the side cutters, but that's okay because this is all getting covered back over again with the with the letter. The letter. You can use a butter a butter knife apparently. That doesn't surprise me at all. Problem with squeezing those is you might not bend the part that deformed inside the cap of the rivet. Yeah, no, it looks like I uh, bent the other side, uh, pulling it up and uh, through-ish into the hole. It's a really good, really good job there. Okay, I think I have all of that string out of there. Let's move on to the string in the actual piece itself. Whew. Interesting to see the uh, the wear patterns on the inside of there, too. <laughs> Corflex, you are not late at all. We just got started. Uh, you just saw me bang out a rivet. <laughs> or at least uh, pop out a rivet, rather. Uh, let's get one of my sewing needles here so that I can just loop out some of that terribleness. Uh, these two are my good friends. Blunt-ended and not bent. You are uh, just used for making triangular-shaped holes, which I am led to believe from the Civil War are incapable of being sutured shut. Right. Noted Civil War <laughs> enthusiast? God, no. Historian? Absolutely not. Uh, noted Civil War commentator, Ian Horner. I think that was that was the biggest problem with the Civil War was the uh, the, the lack of good uh, a good commentary team. And really kind of left a lot of, a lot of that fruit hanging. Okay, the Canadian Civil War. Yes, yes, clearly the Canadian Civil War. <laughs> All right. Yep. Is that hockey? I honestly have no idea. I, I have uh, managed to... Just completely avoid being a sportsman person, good or otherwise, and I, I am quite happy with it that way. Uh, let's just slice down here. There should be some threads in there, and now there aren't. Now we've got our D-rings and a uh, length of cotton belting. 
let's just have a look here. So that's that's going to be fine again. We're going to get a little bit of play back and forth, but it's still going to look real, real good. And I'm going to be happy with that. Where is my ridiculous waxed thread? Oh, because we're going to need, I, I want to say, a few, actually. Uh, a few loops. That's honestly no sense in uh, saving thread. We have space to work with, and that's what we want. Okay. Today I learned that garters are standard sports equipment in hockey. Well, I mean, you know, I mean that, that garters make a lot of sense, uh, be just because they keep your socks up. You know, they used to be pretty common, uh, pretty common wear amongst all uh, men who would uh, wear any form of a slip down sock. I mean, think things changed obviously uh, at post. Sweat sock, I want to say? Yeah. I mean, I, I, there's a, not a good chance, but there's a chance I'll probably have been, end up wearing garters at some point in my life as well, just because I'm one of those people who absolutely cannot stand ankle socks. And I am absolutely the kind of person who never goes anywhere barefoot please cover up my horrible body keep it away from nature it's really for both uh, for both of us <laughs> stitch before rivet that's a good question i'm thinking about that and i think that is the correct answer ah uh, god i hope i got enough fabric in there okay so we got the two top holes which we haven't used. Uh, and then... Oh boy, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> let's remember something very important here. Uh, let's get this in here. Inside. There we go. Do not ever forget to put the D-ring in before you start sewing, because I know I've made that mistake at least once. You want five times the length of the stitch? Yeah, I was going for four mentally, but uh, I mean, this is... Da -da -da, one... Two... Three... Four... Five... That is less than half the... So yeah, we're good, I think. We're good here. In this perception of triangular wounds couldn't be sutured to common misconception is why triangular bayonets were used in the Civil War period. It's actually a far simpler reason a triangle shape made the bayonet less likely to bend. So how did the soldier to thrust the blade in deeper? The wound itself wasn't any more likely to repair than any normal wound of the same severity. Well, thank you, America. That is me learning a thing today. Uh, thing number one. I like to learn new things, and uh, I appreciate you telling me I've completely forgotten how to how to sew <laughs> all right let's have a look here so we're gonna do I think three or four loops around those first two through the leather and then back and forth both sides up both sides down okay I think I know what I am doing now I think that I have figured my life out Let's pull it through, and let's uh, get that set up. So there's two, two needles. Okay, let's send this one down and through hole number one, because thankfully we've already punched our holes. Good God, trying to do this. I've forgotten how fun it is to sew on a stream while being aware of... Uh, being watched and such. Do I have images turned on? I do not, Corvus, unfortunately, due to uh, bad things, but I can have a... Nope, I can't even open that, because... Oh, wait, here we go. Browser is happening. Yeah. Yes, that's the... Uh, 
that was me remembering that switch, that stitch. Uh, okay. So, we're all the way across. How is our length? We're about even. I'm happy with that. Let's uh, send it back on through. And then we're going to just bring it back up through the hole. And cinch it all up. Okay, I think what I did last time... Did I use anything to hold this in place last time? I'm not sure that I did. I don't think I did. But that's okay. Uh, so we need to do this back over. But we need to send the other side up through again as well. So that'll be our third loop over the top. Okay. And... Oh boy, doing this at a table was a bad idea. But here we are. Normally you glue it first, but since you've got the holes, it'll probably be fine. Yep, that's that's the hope. <laughs> okay, come on. Find me the holes. Nope, that didn't go the right way. Find all the holes. Oh, all hello holes. Holes. Get in your get in order. I'm worried about banging my finger, too, because even though these are blunt needles, they're still sharp enough that they'll stick something in your, uh, in your finger. Okay, come on. You're there. I know there's a hole there. Okay, you know what? Maybe we'll just come in from the other side a second time. Come back over the top. No, we want to go back to the other uh, the other way to do this properly. Ah, oh, boy. Uh, using such soft and already. Uh... Oh, there we go. It's through. There we go. Okay, and then back down. And I think this might be the last one we loop this way. Down, and then one more over the top from the back side, and then I think it's about time to start the actual stitch itself down the down the line. I'm gonna see if turning this this way makes it easier, because yeah, it obviously absolutely makes it easier. You know why? Because now it's on my side, and I can see it easier. Let's see here. So we got both sides down there. Everything's good and cinched up. Ah, <sighs> yes, you get to see the uh, the full collation. Wait, how far do I? Ooh, wow, that's that's some shininess. <laughs> Let's not do that again. It's also very warm here. I'm gonna open a window. Be right back. Uh oh. There we go. A little bit less, a little bit less overheating here. Okay, next stitch up. We need um, so I'm going to send this side back up again, and then we're on our way to Das Races. Das Races being. Not Le Mans. That doesn't come until later in the year, but other races are available. Okay. And then that one goes down. And then we send it back through the, uh, the other side and out the same hole. 
creating a saddle stitch that is strong and flexible. All right. Do it again. Only this time, down and through. And then up and out. Once again, through the same hole. This is working. Ah, oof, ow. This is working magically. God, the bag already feels better to be, to, uh, to look at due to the, ah, the new D-ring. Seven on says I should really learn how to sew properly at some point. Basically, I can just do ad hoc repair. I mean, that's, that's something. One doesn't need to have all the skills all the time. One just needs to be willing to pick up the skills or uh, try. Also, unsure what you mean by properly so. Okay, I'm not missing any stitches here, am I? Because that would be embarrassing. Okay, how are we looking here on both sides? Straight line, haven't missed a hole yet. Let's keep on keeping on. Hope that we don't uh, bust any of this up. If I have... Santo Signan says, Ian, I assure you one can so wrong. You are proof. Well, uh, you know what? There's got to be an exception to every rule. And uh, congratulations. You get to be that today's exception. Okay. Through and back again. A hobbit's tail. You know what I need, actually should do that I haven't done yet that I think uh, is going to be important is actually putting something through this hole here, that hole, and then the third hole, because I'm already seeing that there's, we're having issues uh, bumping stuff out. You know, it feels like I didn't take enough thread, and it might be the case, but not going to. Not going to shut it down now. Tell you what. <laughs> Quitting? That's quitter's talk. Do I look like a quitter to you? No. As you can see, I have on this collared shirt. That means I am an office worker. And office workers don't quit. Oftentimes because they have families and they need the money. Just looking for a good break right now is all. Just need a just need a win. There we go. Yeah, videos are being taken care of. Don't worry about that. We have we have top people on it. I would say top men, but Honestly, we all know that there are multiple people doing the work. Not all of them, in fact, very few of them. Men. All right. We are rounding a corner, folks. Coming up the other side, or at least we are. coming up this side. There we go. That feels a little bit better positioned. Well, thank you so much, Brownie Points. I don't know anyone has not, if I don't know if anyone said that to me today, but I 
appreciate hearing it nonetheless, because yeah, we don't we don't say that enough to each other. Where was I going with that? I was going for a zippity whiz well not a zippity whiz bang, something to stick through as a hole. Uh maybe like just a small Let's go with a uh copper rivet just for the moment. That that'll do. Yeah, like a rivet, says Corpus. <laughs> Only we had something there. All right, let's just send that through. Send it. And that will help keep things in place. I'm not going to attempt to use copper rivets on this particular uh, bag this time, though. I'm not happy with the brass. The brass ones have done quite well so far. Okay. Everyone's able to see everything okay, I hope. No problems there. Down through that hole. Give it a cinch. Take the other hook. And send it back out to the other side. In the same hole. The same hole. The very same. Mm. Oh, wait, I have accidentally clicked a thing and I have a context menu open that I do not want. Man, not sure how I feel about, uh, not, not I, I don't know about the rest of you and I don't know where to talk about. Wow. Why is it just not, uh... Okay, well, sure, fine. I'll just view the page's source. Thanks. That fixed it. All right. Ancient Hour, and yes, we are, in fact, almost a month out of Desert Bus, and that is a frightening prospect for all involved on this side of the camera. <laughs> No, we 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 got it all under control. It's it's being planned, but you know the 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 joke is, of course, that we never have. I mean, honestly, we do never have enough time. It would be nice to have more time, but got it under control. There we go. That's the right. I almost skipped a hole. That's not a. That's not right. <laughs> Eduardo's own. Yes, this has been my personal bag for the past two, three years now. Two and a half, I want to say. It's uh. What's fun about it is that. Uh... Okay. No, I think I need to go. Yes. Aha. Step one away. There we go. Now we're correct. And then this one goes over like this. There we go. Yep, uh, Mongo Dude, this is a, this is that very same bag that I made on stream. But yeah, three years of use. It's just been getting softer and softer. It is exactly the size I need it to be. Honestly, that's one of the best things I can. Uh, one of the best reasons I can give for making your own bag uh, is that you, it will be exactly the bag that you want it to be, which means you should absolutely put some thought into what you want your bag to be. That was the whole point of this one, was the ability to hold and sandwich uh, and soda stream bottle and uh, I think and sunglasses. And that was it. I don't even think sunglasses was part of the uh, part of the list. But it specifically was a, uh, a soda stream bottle on a sandwich to take to work. That said, haven't been going to work much in the past year and forever. So, crafted on 2019. Oh, June 13th. Wow. 
Temporal Uri says, uh, I'd love to have a forever bag, but I'm still trying to figure out a forever notebook size. <laughs> yeah, that's difficult to... I mean, they, they, that's not to say that you couldn't, should you desire, take apart your bag and reform it into a something better or differently sized, should you need. Why, I could, uh, I could do that with this one. Would I change anything about this, though, if I were to do it again? Uh, if I were, this isn't a question I got in the chat, this is just off the dome. I'm, I don't love this as a, as a clasp or as a closure. Let me show you what I usually just end up doing is slipping it the, uh, through that way. And it just stays mostly closed enough, uh, as I'm walking around. Cause this flappy bit just doesn't bang around anywhere. Maybe just put a little stud there to uh, tuck it in. I might, yeah, I might do some form of magnetic or uh, or easier closure. But yeah, contingent cat is there. Uh, magnetic clasp. That said, I do like having the option to just really uh, clamp down the, the bag should it need to be uh, closed in such a way that it'll take someone a couple seconds to get in get into it. It's all part of the uh, use case. You know, sometimes I'm in... Uh, I don't generally worry about theft, but... Or pickpocketing, but... You know, if I'm in a noisy area, which is... Or a travel area or someplace where there's a chance that I might have... Or, you know, I've got a checkbook in there or something. You might just want to uh, have it closed in such a way that someone can't just slip their hand inside. Because honestly, the real security with the checkbook is the uh, is the stop checks, uh, phone call to the bank. But I've had to deal with those a couple times. I was working as a telephone banker. Let me tell you, people are uh, are generally uh, pretty stressed out when they lose a checkbook. Hmm. If you ever get back to traveling by motorcycle, I imagine a secure bag would be useful. Yep, exactly. That's another good reason. Is that occasion uh, condition after daily or occasional use? This is after pretty much da daily use. This has been a daily driver uh, for that whole four years. Uh, it's been... It basically, you can consider that any time I leave the house, I've got this bag on my, on my shoulder. I mean, honestly, it's, it's, it's uh, converted me to purse life. Let's be clear. Because that's, that's what this is. This is a purse. Uh, especially once I started putting my wallet in it. Why did I put my wallet in it? Well, because it's such a good place to keep your wallet. It's not in your back pocket. No one's going to pull it out of your back pocket. It's also not going to butts up your uh, your back when you're sitting on it. Like, it's, it's not even a... Oh, messenger bag is such an interesting term, too. So I, don't, I think it only really came about... Well, did it? Or was it... Uh, I, I, I honestly think that this is more of a... Closer to a traditional map case than a, a World War I map case than, uh, than a messenger bag. Because it's certainly not... Uh, I mean, one of the key... Com uh, things about a messenger bag is uh is that it's a, there to hold documents and this i don't think is shaped in any way to uh to hold a document other than a letter uh in in envelope which has been nice book bag perhaps perhaps i it's just my bag it's just a bag 
but I have no problem with it being a purse, if that's what people want to call it. I have no problem with it being a bag. What I just want it to be is reliable and always here. Okay. And, 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 just because I'm me, not looking like shit, which is what these were doing to the situation. Wow, that is a lot of lag on the top camera. Okay, let's see here. One, two, three, ho. Oh. oh boy. Let's, uh, let's not, uh, not be pro gamers with that. We could be pro Fortnite gamers. Cool pro Fortnite game. Don't care if that song is played out. Still my favorite meme of 2020. Yes, I know. Also, it was not a 2020 meme. <laughs> okay. Can that... There we go. All right, now we just got to uh, do the loop on the back side a couple times, and I think I think that we've got this one done. One and done. Come on, go on up, just go on up. Mm. Aha, there's the hole. Wait, that's the wrong hole. That's the right hole. Okay. Back down and out again. And I think if we do one more loop, I'll be happy with that. All right, so we just stick up in there. Sticky up. Oop. Through. Come on. So you can tell you're almost there. <laughs> because there becomes less and less room in the holes for the amount of thread you're putting through them. All right. Ghost Jeff Goldblum, that's that, that's a uh, that's a good piece of knowledge to have about yourself. Uh, like there's, I, I I will of course make the uh, the quick discussion to. Uh, not not try and sell you on the idea of a uh, a bag like this, but I think uh, that they do wear very well. And so if it's the sort if uh, a bag with this kind of leather uh, will hold up to you know hold up to getting thrown around quite nicely, uh, it doesn't take doesn't take to being scratched too nicely, but I don't generally scratch the bag. So, all right, what I'm doing now here is I'm just threading behind my own head uh, back up the other side. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to give it a cut there on the inside for hidden factors. We'll do the same thing here. Come on. You can, oops, let's put that down while we do that. Let's put that down over here while we do that. Okay. Yeah, my previous stitching was stronger than metal. <laughs> Good point. Good point. And to be fair, if you feel like leather might be too much of an investment from the original nesting bags, what made it heavy duty canvas and the line with waterproof fabric, so it's not as much. So it's not 
as if you actually have to go leather if you want a durable, nice-looking bag. Just have to actually want to do it. <laughs> yeah. No, I've, I've uh, had a number of bags in my life, and honestly, having one that was made for me for the size, or yeah, having one made for me by me, uh, really uh, improved my happiness with carrying a bag, too, actually. Like, the minute you know exactly what you want to carry around, you can pair back a lot, and then the minute you're carrying less, you feel a lot better, honestly about uh not about anything you literally physically feel better because you uh have to deal less with back issues where was i going with this holy moly i've got screw rivets i this is that's not for here but good to know uh good we have a banger let's get one of these out one little brass river. Oh, one little brass backer. There we go. Okay, let's get the... You know, I should have pushed it through the other way so that we could have gotten a... Uh... So that I could have just pushed the uh, the rivet up through with continuity, like a follower. I know it's called a follower, but thanks to the lock-picking lawyer. He has something for you today. All right, let's get that on there. I'm just going to be... Ooh, it just pops in place a bit, but we'll give it a bit more pop. Don't you worry about that. Just need some... Striking implements and a striking plate. Get our, we got our dead blow, and we'll just use this. As you can see, it's been used for punching uh, before. Not uh, those aren't rivet marks; those are from a, a different punch process. But there we go get the cover on there and get ready for some loud noise draconid streams yeah actually i do enjoy uh, a good lock picking um i understand there are some legal issues with it here in bc owning tools so i don't know if i do or not but uh it's certainly a uh Something I, I, I got into when I was actually on the Joko cruise uh, a couple of years back. They had a, a small lockpicking, uh, introduction to lockpicking seminar. And it was, it was a lot of fun. I, I, I picked it up really, the, the basics really quickly. And so just watching the, the, the lawyer's videos has been giving me the itch to, uh, to get back into it. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into that. But, um, all right. <laughs> Honestly, what, what all it might just mean is uh, not mentioning where I am at the top of the video. <laughs> Locksport on the cruise was wild. There were so many people. Yeah, there were a lot there. But uh, it was also fun to, to have the person who was running the seminar get called away to... Uh, what did they do? Uh, called away to do a lock picking on the ship for i think one of the jewelry uh stores that was there okay thank you sarah marco i'm, I'm really pleased with this bag and i'm i mean we we could call this done we're, we're we're an hour in and we could call this one done because that's uh that's as solid as it was but uh i think we're going to do more of it we're going to do the other side, too. Let's uh, let's even this stuff up. But before we do, we are going to uh, have to take... Well, we're not going to have to, but we are going to take a quick break. Because I'm going to want to uh, swap my fluids, get up, uh, stretch, move around a bit. And I think you should do the same uh, if it's been a while before you've done that. So, without further ado, it's break time. And we'll be back with more Tinker Tailor Soldier Fry uh, fixing the other half of a bag after this. Don't go away. 
Hey folks, welcome back to Tinker Taylor Solder Fry here on the Mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. My name is Ian, and we are continuing on with our repair of the leather bag that was over here and is now over here. Wham! Uh, it may seem perfectly fine to you, but I can assure you that this particular D-ring is a ticking time bomb which is just waiting to explode. So we're going to uh, run it back, I guess. One more, uh, as, as, as is the parlance, and uh, replace this D-ring on this side as well. Uh, let's see if we can learn anything from this this time. The answer is no. I, I don't think we can learn anything new. We just need to do as infinity. Uh, that said, thank you for uh, pointing me in correct directions. We, with regards to a walk picks uh in bc um yeah i don't know where i heard that first it was I'm not going to call the person out because uh they are a person who i would consider to be a reasonably smart individual reasonably well plugged in that said uh they were wrong <laughs> so they might not have been wrong at the time and that's that's the uh that's the thing so but yeah, definitely going to look into it a bit more just to make sure, and then I think we might, uh, you might see some lock stuff here on Tinker Taylor sometime in the future. Because it's definitely a let's try thing. Alright. It's one of those things, what I like about it, or what I liked about it when I was trying it, was that it was something that required you to really not uh not look at what you're doing there there was no there there isn't a visual component to it it's all feel and that's that's interesting and I, I, in my mind i find it actually quite relaxing too yeah yeah exactly <laughs> with a new lockpick that he certainly doesn't own and bought exactly for that. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh. Yeah, it's interesting. It's always interesting to think about what are what things are legal to own and what things are legal to use, and the fact that there is not a one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence with those two facts. My experience with lockpicks in my time in California is even though it's legal and one of those you're allowed to have this in your home legally anywhere in chain similar same with flare guns really yeah yeah all right let's get some of these strings out here venerable MIT lock picking guide actually describes how to make your own picks <laughs> Might be trying to fun to make them on your own on stream. You know what? That actually sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I had no idea that there was an M MIT lockpicking guide, so gonna have to a look that up and then b uh, maybe look into those those things. And then obviously when it's time for me to uh, when it's time for me to change my windshield wipers, don't throw the, the old. I mean, recycle the old ones. <laughs> Thank you, Arclight. I appreciate the direct direction towards these things. I also just find it interesting the so like let's my, my one of my favorite examples is uh, is home taping. Let's talk about that for a second uh, because you know the VCR was. Uh, Initially, I mean, it was thought of by the entertainment industry as a Jack the Ripper that was just going to completely murder the entirety of uh, of their business model. And it turns out that no, it, it gave them a new business model. But uh, but I mean, there there were some 
even the cassette tape was thought by many within the music industry to be a a huge problem and you know it was my family for the longest time uh would go to the library uh get uh get some lps and this is when i was much younger when the lps were uh a, a valid distribution method and not just a uh a new and not the interim period before they once again became another valid distribution method <laughs> But yeah, we get Sesame Street Disco or some some other uh, stuff like that, and then we'd bring them home, and uh, and make a copy onto a tape, and you know we do the same thing with tapes. And you know what? In Canada, you pay a blank uh, a blank tape levy to cover the cost to offset that uh, that thing because it is for a personal use. Now the uh, the landscape has absolutely changed since uh, since the olden days, but uh, this is why we have laws like uh, or certain provisions within the DMCA. By the way, don't forget the DMCA is not just terrible about uh, uh, about your YouTube. It's also what kept you from being able to make copies of your DVDs. Not because it wasn't technically possible, but just simply because it was not allowed. Anyone with a DVD reader has the ability to to copy the contents of a DVD uh, onto their home computer for for media shifting or use because it's it's just bits. But then you say you're not allowed to do that. Well, now we can start putting some arbitrary technical barriers into your way. But that also means that you have, as I was saying, the anti-circumvention uh, laws and measures, which mean which make it just illegal to uh, to copy a DVD because you are breaking a uh, and you you are circumventing an encryption that was applied to the to the system. All right, there we go. Uh, you know, this one didn't come off nearly as cleanly, but I'm okay with that. In fact, this one is doing me real dirty. But that's okay. We'll get there. Urgh. Oh my goodness. What have I done to this poor rivet? We'll just pull through. Yep, there we go. Got it out. Got it in w w one. One. <laughs> no, Captain Klein, you, 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 you basically got it. God, what was I... Uh, watching the other day, it was a the, oh, it was the story of Bakshi and the and the Ring. Uh, can't remember the gentleman's name, but it was the video essay uh, talking about the uh, that went somewhere. That's uh, for later Ian's feet to discover. Um, <laughs> yeah, just thinking about the, the the brief time when the Lord of the Rings was outside of copyright in the United States, and. Uh, <laughs> Got to uh, got up to large distributions. What was my point about that? I have no idea. <laughs> All right, now this time, let's be smart about it. Let's uh, put our uh, our rivet, our temporary rivet in the other direction so we can follow back through the other side. Ha ha. Ha ha. Secret is that the production was never meant, never expected to stop mass piracy rings, but only to stop individual casually rip copying from their neighbor. Yeah, exactly. They, they, they wanted to, uh, God, I remember plugging the analog hole was a term that, uh, that came, uh, or that was in heavy use for a while, which was that the analog hole being the, uh, the, the, 
Oh my goodness! Uh, uh, we, we've made it. We we put these anti these digital anti uh, circumvention measures in so that people are not no longer allowed to uh, to copy our DV or CDs to, to uh, music. But these there's these pesky ports on the back of these things. These uh, these RCA ports that just people can plug into and, and access, and they don't they don't respect any sort of uh, any sort of restrictions digitally that we put on them. So we need to rem remove them. <laughs> thank you, Barry and I. Thank you so much for literally uh, helping me out with the uh, the one job that I had today. <laughs> Did anyone else know that before that? No. Good. Good. Uh, Rainco's Bear asks, how do you and I see today's leather working, making thrift store purses into medieval belt pouches? No, making raw, uh, using a, repairing a bag that I made out of raw leather uh, by hand, from scratch, without plan. This is, this is no mere hack of a, uh, of a thrift store purse. Why, this is 100% Ian Horner original. Yes. Oh yeah, the, the James Bond coming out of copyright recently in Canada, briefly. There's the whole issues surrounding uh, the uh, Sherlock Holmes estate from the Conan Doyle estate. There's the uh, LeBlanc estate in uh, in France and their their feelings around the Lupin characters. <laughs> Big Blue Man, I, I, I appreciate that, and honestly, you're not the first person who has said that about these particular bags as well, uh, and boy, um, in a different world, maybe I would just be making uh, bags 24-7 to sell off as custom things, but uh, unfortunately, that is not the way that my life has gone so far. Perhaps in the future, though. Perhaps in the future. <clears throat> anyway, let's uh, make sure to lock our uh, our thread. So let's uh, send the needle through the thread there. Come on, because it's a a, a blunt tipped needle, uh, it's a little harder to get through there. But what in the damn it! All right, let's try that again. Cut off a bit there. I put a lot of extra into this particular thread, so it won't be an issue. <laughs> Just prevented another possible trip to the highlight reel. I mean, I might, I probably would have noticed before I started sewing. That said, you never know. All right. And there we go. That's a good lock there. Boop -a -doop. Do the same on the other side. Okay. How difficult would it, would you say, this to repair a leather bag that aged? Oh, Sean, that's, uh, it depends on the, it depends on the age, depends on the type of leather itself, um, and depends what the repair is. Like a, uh, this this kind of leather repairs really well because it's it's just it's thick it's like uh it's almost like working with uh with wood or, or metal in that respect and that there's a uh, the holes stay open uh and there's lots of oil and wax in here to keep the uh to keep the leather supple and and workable um but if you're looking at something like say a uh, a wallet you know where the leather is much thinner and it's usually you're just getting a, a very thin or like a watch strap. <clears throat> that's going to be more difficult to repair. Um, and if you're looking at, you know, reconditioning the leather, that's that is something that can be done. But it's not something that I have any experience in at all, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to, no, nope, we're not going to turn it over. We're going to get used to sewing from this side, I guess. Can I shove, hey, I can shove that inside. Cool. I mean, I can do what I want, but it's my show. You're just all along for the ride. 
Oh, yes. What? Okay, I want to make sure I've got... So, here's the thing I'm trying to make sure, is that I start in the right holes. Because if I don't, then... Uh... Then I won't have enough holes to go through. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're not using that top one for this. Got it. That was just an extra, it looks like. And if it wasn't, well, we'll find out on the other side together. All right. Good. Going back here to check on the chat while we, uh, before we get too much into the sewing there. Hmm. Talk about the naked lunch, says Captain Clown. That's, uh, wow. Don't often get to talk about Cronenberg. Well, let's note cannons that Ian can do what he wants. <laughs> Senator Stubbs picked up some leather to replace a watch strap because the repair folks they took it to said it can't be done and just get a new watch. Wow! Just get a new watch. That's, um... <laughs> That's a little extreme, I want to say. Get a new watch. Jeez. Did I put that? I did put it through the wrong... I did, I did put it through the wrong hole. Despite, you know, my, my best efforts and uh, me saying, hey, Ian, put it in the right hole. The puts in incorrect hole. Even out. Good. Was this watchsmith also trying to sell watches, maybe? <laughs> I mean, the, the, like, the band is the cheap part. The band is the cheap part that generally comes on a spring-loaded uh, thing for ease of replacement. They're meant to be the replaceable parts. Get a new watch. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, get, 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 get through the hole. Er, uh, um... Hole. Oh boy. In she goes. We haven't even done a full loop yet. I think that's one, two. Over top loops. Good. Now I just want to do three and four, and then we'll be uh, good to move on. Hardest part. <laughs> JFK about you know, putting things into holes is a bit on the nose. I mean, no, I thought it was more of the, uh, more of the temple, but, uh, hey -o. Uh, wow, wow. Welcome to Tinker Taylor Solder Fry, where we, uh, where we s repair leather bags and make jokes about ancient presidents. Okay, I think we're now uh, solidly in in go ahead go forward mode for sewing. So let's uh, let us go forward. Whoop. Go through that last hole there. Oh, it's a fossil watch, and fossil doesn't make that watch or band anymore. Yeah, no, that's exactly why. Fossil is a a fashion watch brand. I mean, not that they're, not that they're not all fashion watches, but yeah, they don't keep things around for a long period of time. But that said, yeah, no, I, I understand that making your own watch straps is a great way to uh, get into leather working. So something I've considered, but not something I have... Uh, done a lot of looking into yet just because it's it is a process i can just do that yeah there we go now i can just open it up that way let's 
see through there. Who likes this? So it's like the Apple, the uh, the Apple, the watch community. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the reasons why Apple got into the watch game. I'm quite certain. That said, I, I got I got to give them some credit for going seven generations of the Apple Watch while still maintaining uh, the original sizes of the uh, the replacement bands. As we talk about repla you know companies that don't uh, don't make replacement bands anymore. <laughs> uh, Arclight, there are I believe there are companies that do that, and I think uh, it doesn't. Isn't Cameron's watch a, uh, I don't know if it's, uh, World War II, but I think it's a NATO reproduction of a perpetual motion, uh, simple one. I don't even know if it has a date or not, but, yeah. So I've done a little bit of leather working before, so I'm at the stage where it's a combination of spite, intrigue, overability. <laughs> ah, yes, no, there is there is no better learning tool than spite. Anyone who uses spite as a as an excuse for continued ignorance is doing it wrong. Nothing's better than acquiring a new skill and using that to shove it in someone's face. <laughs> mm. I mean, it's, it's, it's why we have, uh, honestly, it's why we have most technological progress is like, Oh, I want to show up that guy who invented that, do that Nukeman and his contraption with steam? Why, if I were to build a steam contraption, it would be twice as efficient. Or well, my name's not James Watt. And, and, and he did. Only he had a... <gasps> Sorry, the one time I'm, I'm allowed to do an act... I, I'm, I'm allowed. No one's st stopping me. But the one time I can legitimately do an accent, I choose not to. My name isn't James Watt. Hey, w w what's your last name? Aye, it is! Okay, that's, that's me going to jail. Or at least being banned entry from Scotland, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure Scotland wants me. <laughs> For crimes against the Hebrides. Oh my god, what is it your problem? There we go. That was a tiny hole that's causing a lot of issue. Ah. <sighs> Okay. Oh yeah, there's no one as as lazy as a, uh, or no, there's no one as clever as a lazy biochem, says uh, Ghost of Jeff Goldblum, according to their uh, their undergrad lab teacher. Correct there, yep. Yeah. This is the other thing about programmers, is you, know, it's, you always have the question, you're always faced with the question, always. Uh, is there a way I can automate this, this task that I've been given? And, I mean, the answer is always yes. And if so, how much time can I spend on automating it versus actually just doing the task? And the answer is, well, yes, absolutely, we have to automate it. I have to save time. And that's how we used to get Unix tools. I'm honestly not sure where we get Unix tools now. I think they, uh, I think they actually appear in repositories from alternate dimensions where people, where Unix got a bit more of a, uh, a go. <laughs> K 
can't believe I heard an entire tutorial on Plan 9 the other day. Not the one from Outer Space, the one from Bell Labs. The, the Operating System Plan 9. I think I may have... Messed up? Nah. Never happened. Never will happen. Never had it. Never will. Never. All right. Mm. Oh, yeah, Arclight, I think you got the right answer there. Yeah, open source software is basically people just... being lazy or putting more time into fixing a problem than is rationally warranted. <laughs> Oop, there we go. But, um, yeah. Okay, so I need to continue over from here. That way I have a an out hole for my to uh, match up to. Getting the order is, I, I don't think the order is necessarily meaningful, but just making sure that you are progressing for going through the hole correctly, progressing to the next hole in sequence, and then Okay, I think we might have uh, been had an off by one error, but I don't think it's actually going to matter all that much. Let's get in there. So you can see it's... Uh, I gotta go... Oh, no, I don't go, gotta go back through that hole. I jump over the stitch here, go through the hole where the string has come out. And that completes the stitch on this side, and then we'll do it again on the other side. So I guess, so as a way of uh, thinking about it, you've got the two threads that are kind of crossing each other through the same hole and then crossing back, crossing back, crossing back. So at least one side is uh, always... Uh, if you break one string, you're not going to lose the entire thing. Dragon 8 streams, I, it's... I also have a bit of an issue with that aspect of it. And I think I'm going to have to do some workshopping for a new motto. Because, yeah, this is literally about... Uh, if, if you don't learn something from doing something, it's, uh, well, either you've, you, you've done it enough times that you don't need to uh, think about it, which is odd, but that's not us. We're trying things sometimes for the first time, sometimes for the third time, and in the case of the Dreamcast, probably eight times, but, you know, we, we, we learn things from them as they, uh, how about ever forward resentfully learning? Ever forward, the knowledge through knowledge through spite. <laughs> the other option is we could always take the uh, the uh, Griffin and David podcast rule and uh, go with as always, and then change the as always weekly. Did the Dreamcast get done? Orion's Rise. Yes, it did. And in fact, uh, you'll be seeing that on Rhythm Cafe at some point in the coming uh, weeks, months, etc. Because there's some games on the Dreamcast that are rhythm-based. In fact, some of my favorite rhythm games are on the Dreamcast. And uh, I wanted to play them on the Dreamcast. So we needed to, uh, we needed to finish the Dreamcast. And then we did. The end. Cool story, Ian. Actually, I pulled it out of storage the other day just to uh, fire it up and get it ready for, for something in the near-ish future. I mean, there's no, no surprises, no, no 
this is this this is called uh this is called promotion uh samba de amigo 2000 i want to play samba de amigo 2000 and i mean we could play the original samba de amigo but there's it's really just the same game it, it, you play 2000 because it's got extra songs <laughs> Okay, trying forces you to learn the wrong things. Stuff that comes up when you couldn't anticipate reading a book. Yeah. Like, honestly, the, 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 the motto I would use if I had come up with it, and it wasn't already literally a motto for another uh, organization that I also, or was also part of, and maybe I should join again as a leader or something, is 4-H. I absolutely love 4-H's motto of learn to do by doing. And I stand by that. And I mean, it, it goes so much farther than just down, uh, than just about activities and skills. Because it matters uh, in terms of your uh, stretching the muscle of learning to do things. And also to do things, like doing, act, taking action, being a part of your community. And you learn to do that by by doing it, by being a part of it, getting out there, uh, doing a roadside cleanup, etc., etc. Uh, okay, that's, I think, the end of our stitches. Cool me. Actually, this side is a little bit different. I'm going to try something different here. Uh, I'm going to use these top two holes to, uh... No, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I am actually going to, uh... Send it through the hole as it's supposed to be going. <laughs> ah, Contingent Cat, I... I... I, I would not use their motto out of respect for the organization as well. And it is also an organization I deeply respect. Uh, I think it's uh, it provided me a lot of opportunities, and I think it does so for a lot of kids out there. Go check out your, uh, your, your local 4-H chapter. And if you're a parent of a kid who's starting to get into their tween years... Uh, definitely go check out your, uh, your local 4-H chapter. It is not all uh it is not at all in the slightest uh all agriculture in fact all of the uh, courses i did were completely agriculture free <laughs> uh, I, I did uh sewing cooking and a small photography and a small engine repair which was me uh, and and my father and other 4-H leaders and other 4-H kids in the time taking apart a Briggs and Stratton uh, lawnmower engine and stripping it to pieces and then hand cleaning in a uh, in Varsal baths each and every piece of the of the engine and then putting it back piece by piece with brand new filters and new gaskets and learning how gasket works and then finding out that some asshole kid stole your crankshaft and replaced it with their bent crankshaft so your once running lawnmower no longer runs but hey i'm not bitter <laughs> all right let's uh let's put away these uh these threads here that took a lot less time uh this time i i guess uh the act of uh, doing it once makes it, uh, brings back the muscle memory. There we go. And then we're going to tie them off there. All right, that's one. And then tie it off the other way. And then we'll send the threads back through for a slice down. Come on out, you two. 
Let's all engage in some light operation. All right, and I'll just get a blade under there and just slightly snip those two. Boop. Invisible. All right, now we just need to do the the rivet, as it were. What am I talking about as it were? It is a rivet. It's not a... Stop being coy about your rivets, Ian. <laughs> mm. Ryan's rise. That's a that's a good. Uh, that is a good piece of advice from your grandfather there. I personally still like to uh, to stick to my my own, which is that if I consider it broken, I can't make it any less broken. Or, no, the opposite. <laughs> I can't make it any more broken. <laughs> All right. In there. Let's get that uh, pop top on. Uh, where's my banging stick? And where'd my big banger go? Seriously, where'd my big banger go? Chat, who stole my hammer? Ah, there it is. Whew. Back behind me. <laughs> okay. And three, two, one. And that to me looks uh, pretty solid. And I think we missed one hole there, but I'm okay with it. These are probably going to have to come back again at some point in the future. I'm sure these D-rings will, uh, will not last. But hey, we got it. We got it. That is a, another bag. And you can, could you even tell that this had been repaired? That this was not the original state of said bag? I say to thee nay. <laughs> ah. If we ever do this again, though, I think I might change this up a bit. Ugh. I'd have to replace the entire strap, but that's okay. But I'd love to get the stitching down around the uh, the third rivet. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with uh, with how this came out. That was uh, that was a good use of time. Let's uh, let's just connect these up here and just see how they feel. Okay, that's nice sound. Good motion. <laughs> Do the other one there. All right. Put that out there. Good. 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 Dang, I love this bag. Can <laughs> I do with it? Um, yeah, I guess that is it because i didn't have a backup project um set up for today but uh yeah just looking over the uh the stuff here i've actually got the naomi on the table um but i don't need to do any work on that right now and i've got a broken naomi that uh I don't know what I need to do with yet, so I think I need to actually have... To, I'm going to have to uh, to look into that before we uh, before I bring that on stream. <laughs> uh, dance for you, beer chat? I mean, we could, uh, we could chat for a few minutes if anyone's got any cues that they want aid. Um, yeah, next five minutes or so. I mean, we're, we're, ba we're almost at the top of the, the hour here, so... Uh, break the bag again they say Ian's testing the motion of his new d's i should swap the cameras here so that uh we're less uh less tiny uh yeah i'm gonna have another sip of beer because we're just about done that that's uh... 
pleasant. Ooh, I should clean up a bit here too. Put my needles away. Let's see here. Special screening of the latest checkpoint episode? Question <laughs> mark. That could be. Uh... Yeah, I could watch a checkpoint. Sure, that, that's a thing I could do. Boral Majas, what beer is this evening? The beer this evening is Red Racer's uh, Blue Pale Ale because uh, it's a it's a nice little beer, and uh, we were out of stuff in the keg earlier this week, so needed to get something in some cans to tide us over until the uh, until Category 12 reopened today. <laughs> uh, where is my little thing there? Got other questions coming up here. I'm concerned to see how many successful TTSF projects there have been as of late. I mean, Draconite Streams, blame it on the studio, blame it on the lack, blame it on the lack of distractions. There we go. And I've got, and I got people all chatting up in my face and my ear. That's, uh, that's, that's when things go wrong, I guess. Uh, Arclight Dynamo has a TTSF pitch, the initial planning stages of a project. You usually come to the show prepared. Have you done your homework? Show us that part. Come to the show with nothing but an idea and show us where you go from there. I, yeah, that's something I'll have to think about, Arclight, because that, that, I feel like that could be an interesting show. Um, I would, what I'd need to do is find a, uh, find a project that, that doesn't work so well with Google. Because that's, I mean, not Google, not, quite honestly, it's DuckDuckGo. But the point stands that a lot of it is, uh, is internet researched beforehand. Uh, Ancient Auron asks, have you ever done a project with vacuum tubes? I've not. I've considered uh, doing some sort of a an, an amplifier, but a lot of, uh, yeah, vacuum tubes are, are, are a tough one because they're, they're hard to find uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the correct style for different uses. Like, I'm, I, I, you know, vacuum tubes might be a good one, actually, because I don't know as much as I would like to about vacuum tubes. I played with uh, a, a pre-made kit uh, of a vacuum tube amplifier, but I worry too much that it's... Uh, I, I worry that there's there's a lot of amplification going on in the integrated circuits on that board, regardless. Uh, blame it on the goose? I mean, yeah, I would love to <laughs> blame anything on the goose. The goose is terrible. I should play that game. I should play Untitled Goose Game is what I should do. Um, let's see here. How about the let's try decon of something? Ah, Ryan's Rise, you may like to uh, go back and uh, watch episode. Uh, there are no numbers, there are no titles for Tinker Tailors at uh, Solid Fry. But check out the episode for April 1st of this year when I unfixed an entire HP printer scanner combo. Got some good parts in there too. I think I actually used the screws in uh, in, in in another uh, amplifier video. Oh, what was the fate of the onions? Says Nickus uh, a while back there. Uh, the the onions probably were sliced into uh, uh, into uh, ring slices for the top of my sandwich. Oh, decon like decontamination. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I'm allowed to shower on stream. I feel like that's not a good idea. <laughs> the other option, of course, for decontamination of myself. I mean, I could pasteurize myself. I could. That's that's kind of like sous vide, isn't it? No. <laughs> Lysander, looking back further there as well, Lysander, uh, Salamander, uh, Another Lysander asks, uh, have you ever thought about trying blacksmithing for a future episode? Damn, I would love to uh, to do some blacksmithing. Um, I don't know if it's going to work on uh, on stream, but we'll, we'll see about that. Um, maybe if we can, uh, if I can find a blacksmithing place, I'll have to see about uh, going out, talking to Alex and going out to the uh, the makerspace. They've got some equipment there. Dark Morford asks uh, with, with a, a wink about the status of the desert bus button. Um, yes. <laughs> what we need to do, uh, Dark Morford, is start working on next year's now, because I think that one, we uh, I've got some really good ideas about how we can do that and definitely get the circuit board printed. This year I've got uh, something in mind for that and it should be fairly easy to put together, so no, no, no particular rush there. Uh, yes, Desert Bus is coming. Yes, buttons are happening. It's uh, it's all going to be very exciting. Yes, there will be a button. 
Let's see here. There's a lot you can do in blacksmithing with a blowtorch master cutter. Interesting fact. I just made sukiyaki for the first time this, uh, uh, for the first two times this week, actually. Uh, and uh, we, but we didn't, what I couldn't find here in town was any grilled tofu. But it turns out that uh, you can grill tofu with a, if you, if you get the, uh, the f extra firm tofu, and uh, just cut it up into your cubes and then put them in a uh, uh, like unheated and uh, unoiled uh, cast iron pan. And just blowtorch the heck out of those or paint them nicely with the, with the blowtorch. The taste is correct and delicious. They look amazing in your, uh, in your sukiyaki, so it's good. Serbia says, I'm picking out a mushroom kit as we speak. Do you have any suggestions for mushroom growing kits? I do. I absolutely do. Um, if you're in... Uh, if you're in the Vancouver Island area, I suggest checking out the For uh, Forager's Galley mushroom kits. They're the ones that I've worked with, and I'm not sure if uh, y'all follow me on Twitter. But we do, I uh, did end up growing a rather large, uh, maybe I'll just show off some of those here on the, uh, on the, boop, on the overhead screen. So uh, here's the uh, day one of uh actual growing when they started to pin uh and then they started to get larger and uh larger than that these are uh, elm oyster mushrooms and i highly suggest uh hi highly suggest uh giving those a try that said uh i did discover something interesting about uh, elm oyster mushrooms specifically. And that is, actually, you know what, I'm gonna keep that up here because I'm gonna show y'all about what happens. So, um, when they become ready to harvest, they will look like this. That's a lot of mushrooms, right? Sure is. Note the, uh, the white powder coating everything. Those, are the spores of the elm oyster mushroom. Uh, and um, let me tell you, one human being uh, and person can be allergic to elm oyster uh, mushroom spores. And the allergic reaction to elm oyster mushroom spores is extreme flu-like symptoms. Like, we're talking... Well, let's say, in my case, we're talking some amazingly uh, uh, fever-like symptoms, chills, shakes, you know, the sort of things that make one, make one think that they might have COVID-19. So, got tested, everything was fine there, but... Holy moly, was that a terrible, uh, a terrible weekend and a delicious, absolutely grumptious pressure cooker risotto with those elm oysters. They were amazing. Anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, so, so, uh, if you do decide to go the elm oyster route, uh, maybe don't just jam your nose into the mushrooms as they're growing and just after the spoils or just before the spores release, because it has a delicious smell. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, shall we uh, call this uh, show? I believe that we shall. And I want to thank everyone for uh, joining me here uh, for this episode of Tinker Taylor Solder Fry. We've had a lot of fun. We've gotten a lot of work done. And that's the most important thing in my book, because I get to have my bag back at 100%. Um, if you like what you see here, check us out over at youtube.com slash loading ready run. That's where you can find links to, uh, when we're showing all the great shows and, uh, all the things that we do. We got our schedule up there, which will tell you that tomorrow, the first thing that's happening is, you know what, let's bring it up. Loading ready run.com slash live is the URL. And, uh, that will tell you that tomorrow we've got a uh, checkpoint at 2 p.m. And then in the evening, we have the Friday Night Paper Fight at 5 p.m. You can uh, have fun there. You can also support us 
in various monetary ways on our YouTube page, which is uh, currently in a state, so don't worry about it. But if you become a member there, you can ask us questions during our monthly Ask Lur streams, and uh, those happen monthly. So sign up for that. Uh, we're going to go to... Uh, mm -hmm. Oof. The uh, next thing I'd like to tell you about is our Patreon at patreon.com slash wedding ready run. Patreon.com. They are the owners of that website, that service, slash loading ready run. That's us. We, uh, we, we would love to see you there, and we are so happy uh, with those of you who do. It keeps the lights on and keeps us going. As well, we want to thank specifically those of you who are generous enough to give us your bits and subs during this particular stream. And I'm going to uh, start off with, uh, let's say... Hmm, we've been here for two hours. Let's, you know what? I'm going to go with uh, Zrex2, 55 months, says sub, evil friend for 21 months. Thank you so much. Swamperman8, who has been a subscriber for five months. Thank you so much for your continued support. Mugu Lord is a 32 month subscriber. Thank you for continuing to be a subscriber here. Dark Magi8 has been a subscriber for three months. Thank you for your continued support. Hats wear cats for 93 months. Big numbers, love it. Thank you. Gotta thank Stonepile3 for a full year, and that's like a real year in human numbers, of a subscription. Congratulations, Stonepile, and thank you. No Noob No has been subscribed for 49 months. Thank you. Durdenstein, coming in at 50, 50 divided by, no, 15 months. I'm not doing math. It's too late for math. But Mac Mini Guru is uh, a seven month subscriber and uh, I can recognize that number. Thank you for, both for your support. Thank you too as well, uh, Educated Goblin, who uh, was given a subscription from an anonymous gift gifter. McGurkinator ZX has been subscribed for 38 months. Blue and rare, perfect for 38. I know that's still in magic then. Cranston snored. Uh, coming in at 44 months. Thank you for your continued support. Gotta thank uh, Tears Red Right Hand for 36 months. That is a uh, fun number that is uh, divisible by two. I like it. Wedge X subscribed for 19 months. Thank you, Wedge, for continuing to be a uh, subscriber to our channel. Lord Husk has a new profile picture and they've been subscribed for 74 months. This makes me really miss the beast. I was a machine that could sew through, oh, quarter-inch plywood, as well as can leather, canvas, and other stock. That sounds like a machine worth having and worth keeping. Spargy, 2197, 61 months. Thank you for your continued support. Ancient Aurin has subscribed for four whole months. Thank you for continuing to uh, be a member of this great community. Captain Wolf coming in at 30 months of subscription. Thank you for your support as well. Uh, got a bunch of bits here. George... George, no. Wow, good use of no, no there. Uh, cheering for 100 bits, thank you so much for that. Not keen to reable for 500 bits, thank you as well for those pretty bits. Coreflux coming in with 100, thank you. Hello, Ian, just subscribed. Thanks to Demonfire, thank you both for that. I'm gonna... That's an interesting... Uh, that, that person is not me. That is not me. <laughs> Xanto69 throwing us some bits here as well for my great leather work. Thank you, Xantos, for your great generosity. Aquinas uh, throwing in 100 for God. Uh, ch cheers to the big guy. <laughs> cheers to you, Aquinas. Uh, Death likes cats. Subscribe for 17 months. Those are, uh, the Death and cats are two of my in inevitable things. I, I will always end up with cats. And Burger Tariff uh, coming in saying hi for 58 months. Thank you so much for your continued support. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, keeping me company while we work on things here, and uh, hopefully we do learn some things. And um, you know what? Until next time, which will be in and Fortnite, uh, we'll be back at that time for our traditional pumpkin carving episode. So uh, get your ideas in, get your pumpkins ready, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you so much, everyone. Ever forward. Um, Learning for spite. Good night. Ah, no, 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 that's, that's not how you leave. It is now. Goodbye!